This English department really broke the trust of a lot of parents and um, we know it's not an isolated incident. Unfortunately, we've had other parents reach out. Hi everyone, Lisa Song Sutton here for Rebel News. Recently here in Nevada, a local public high school assigned as required reading to students as young as 15 years old a very graphic and disturbing novel. In this book, there were depictions, narratives, and illustrations about sex acts, drug use, and it even made fun of Christians. Naturally, parents were very upset, and a local parent advocacy group called Power to Parent jumped into action. I had a chance to sit down with Aaron Phillips from Power to Parent so that we could discuss this issue and also other items that they're working on. Aaron, thank you so much for joining me. So please tell the audience about Power to Parent and what it is that you guys do. Yeah, hi Lisa, thanks for having me on. Um, so my name is Erin Phillips. I'm the president of an organization called Power to Parent. And what we do is we advocate for, we actually empower parents to advocate for their children. And so we've worked in Nevada for a little over six years doing that. And um, we're just continuing to grow and gather more parents to be a part of our organization. That's fantastic. And now you guys do so much work within the community and really highlight specific issues that kind of pop up. Um, in particular, very recently, there was a certain book that was distributed by Clark County School District. Can you tell us what happened with that situation? Yeah, so um, uh, about a week, a week and a half ago, we had several parents reach out to us and let us know that there was a book that was on the reading list for a 10th grade honors English class at a local high school here in town. And that book, they had ordered it, it was the first one on the book list, there was no description, uh, and it was for a graphic novel unit that they were doing for that class. And so a couple of the parents did actually look at the book when it came in the mail, and they were really stunned to see that it was relatively, um, I mean, it was really, really graphic, inappropriate content, um, not just the themes, but it's a graphic novel, so it was really um, depicting sexual acts, and um, they were just really shocked that that would be on that list. So we, uh, one of the parents, or several of the parents, reached out to the administration at that school, and they did pull the unit, which we were grateful for. Um, we have a relationship with the district, so we've already been in conversations with them on trying to uh, hopefully put some some checks and balances in place, so that when there's, uh, you know, content that's being chosen, that it that it gets more eyes on it than just maybe one teacher. Um, and that parents are given a heads up about what their kids are learning in school. And um, and so we did hold a press conference and, and we did discuss that because these are books that parents are getting real time. This is happening right now. So we wanted to make sure as many parents as possible knew we know it's not an isolated incident, which, you know, is unfortunate. We've had parents reach out to us over the past couple of years, letting us know that there was inappropriate, uh, inappropriate material being passed out or taught in a, in a particular classroom. So, so we did make sure that, that parents, um, from a media standpoint, were being informed that that was happening. Um, you know, one of the laws that we realized was being broken in this case is in Nevada, we still have what is uh, referred to as an opt-in law. So we're only one of two states left in this nation, unfortunately, uh, in, in the United States that have this law that requires a permission slip be sent home and a parent signs that permission slip in order for their student to take sex education. Um, most states have have changed that law, um, mostly because of you know activism by uh, some left leaning groups. Uh, they've changed that to an opt out. So essentially, your child your child's going to learn the sex education and, and any content um, that is surrounding sex education at school. Um, and if the parent doesn't um, ask them to be removed, they won't be removed. So it's sort of, um, you know, we call it opt-in, keeps parents in. And so this content we felt like was really breaking that law here in Nevada. And so we wanted to highlight that and make sure um, that they knew that uh, that there was a law that was broken. And so I do know that the Clark County School, School District, uh, based on the information that we gave them, is doing an investigation into those teachers. So we're really grateful for that. That's fantastic. And you guys really, you know, it's such a blessing that you guys serve as that backstop because just as you said, you know, these are busy parents, a lot of working parents, they can't have their eyes on everything all the time. And so, you know, in order to have that backstop and have more people in the community looking out for them and looking out for their kids, ultimately, our kids, it's really, really important. How can we continue to support the work that you guys do and what do you guys have coming up? 
So we recently held a protest, um, a peaceful protest outside of the Clark County School District building here in Las Vegas, uh, asking that um, our our governor would um, would really take the leadership that he needs to be taking and in, um, in the responsibility for opening schools seriously. Um, and so we've asked them to open schools. So that's one of the things we're working on right now. We're seeing so many kids who are being um, being left behind. Uh, mm -hmm. especially our lower income families, our special needs kids, um, families who, who have to make a decision whether they can um, make a living and, and feed their kids or, or, you know, be home and do distance learning because it's just an impossible, it's an impossible choice for so many families. So we're working really hard on that right now. And, and again, in that same frame, we feel like school choice is, is a huge parental rights issue because there's a lot of families right now that can't do distance learning. It's not possible for them to be there logging on and off all the time. And so we're trying to empower parents right now to find out what is gonna work best for their kids and for their families and really decide what, you know, there's a lot of options out there. So we wanna help empower parents to do, to do that. And then at that protest, we were super excited. We launched our, our brand new parent union. And so we are really, really hoping that parents will, we're, we're really building a parent army. That's what we're calling it. <laughs> and so we're asking parents to get on our website, powertoparent.org, and our, you know, follow us on social media and, and get on and join our parent union. Um, we see oftentimes that you get many groups that are represented in, in policymaking and legislation and, and they get a seat at the table Oftentimes, those are unions, and we know they have membership bases who pay money into their into their membership, and then that is how they um, are able to endorse candidates and do a lot of things that um, really gets them a seat at the table. And parents, while you know we said they're, we're not a special interest group, we do have a very special interest, and that is our kids. And so we want to gather and empower as many parents as possible together so that we can and really, you know, really compete on that level and really be able to influence those policies that affect our families directly. So that's what we would love parents to do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And please keep up the great work. You guys are the ones in the trenches on the front line. So thank you so much for all the work that you do within our community here. It's the assignment of books like these that point to a much larger issue that we have. We're talking about the degradation of family values. We're talking about taking God and religion away from our kids and taking it out of any place that is instrumental in their well-being, in the family home, in school. We need groups and we need to support groups like Power to Parent that serve as that watchdog, that serve as that kind of last backstop when parents can't be everywhere so that we can continue to advocate family values and encourage our kids to become young functioning adults in a tough world. I'm Lisa Song Sutton for Rebel News. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Lisa Song Sutton for Rebel News, and here at Rebel News, we tell the other side of the story, but we cannot do it without your support. So please head over to rebelnews.com for more videos. You can support us there, and be sure to like, subscribe, and share.